told me you was you was going with Matt Williams for a time. You talk too much. <laughs> I like her already. Greetings, fellow movie lovers. Welcome to Old Lady Reacts. I'm the old lady, otherwise known as Michelle. I'm a huge movie buff, and this is my channel where I react to mostly action and superhero movies that I've never seen before, but also other stuff that looks interesting or new. I started the channel watching the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe so I could understand the inside jokes and references in WandaVision, and here we are two years later still reacting. It's awards season, and I'm just so excited to discuss all of the greatest movies of 2023 with you guys. Um, last night, I went to the theater, and I saw Poor Things, which was so fabulous, and but also one of like the weirdest and wackiest movies I've ever seen. It, it was really cool visually, and had a great story, and incredible acting. I really, really liked it a lot. Um, and tonight, I was just pulling up Apple TV to watch more Ted Lasso, and I saw that they're playing uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, finally. So I'm switching gears, and we'll get back to Ted Lasso tomorrow. So yeah, we've got Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, Brendan Fraser, Jesse Plemons, John Lithgow, a slew of other great actors uh, directed by, you know, legend Martin Scorsese. And this will be my first time seeing Lily Gladstone in anything, so I'm definitely excited about that. She's already winning awards and stuff, so that's great. I don't know that any Scorsese movies are on the top of my favorites list, mostly because of the, the hyper-masculine focus of most of the characters and plots. Like they just don't they just don't speak to my experience. So while I will, you know, easily acknowledge that Scorsese makes incredible movies that I enjoy watching. They're not movies that I want to watch over and over again. And I'm sure Killers of the Flower Moon, like, they won't won't be that kind of movie either. Um, from what I hear, it's mostly, like, violence and murder. And, you know, yeah, it, it's not, probably not going to be something I'm going to want to rewatch. But I'm sure I'll enjoy it nonetheless. <laughs> so, and I'm also interested to see, like, you know, how how is the indigenous story told? Is it still being told through the lens of the people who murdered them and all of that. So yeah, does the film try to overcome that at all? How are the women's stories treated? Because those are things that are important to me. So yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll get into it all. But before we get started, please like, subscribe, leave comments, do all the things that really does help the channel and make sure to let me know what you think you would like me to react to next. All right, let's dive into Killers of the Flower Moon. This is a long one, so I'm settling in with my blankie and everything. <laughs> oh, are they burying it because they're not allowed to have it? Oh. Huh. Isn't there a scene in... In Giant, where they do that too? The chosen people of chance. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to shake his hand. Nice. Golf courses and everything? <laughs> Airplanes? Oh my god. Okay. I mean, I guess I probably should have looked though, like, what's. I'm sure it's historically accurate. Like, I feel like Scorsese wouldn't make a movie that wasn't really, right? Well, after the movie's over, we'll look and uh, before I write my wrap up, we'll dig into what's historically accurate. Make it rich! You can make it rich! Make it rich! Make it rich. <laughs> Typically, if someone has a way for you to make it rich, they don't share it. <laughs> they keep it to themselves. So why does he have a car with the steering wheel on the right? Whose land is this, Henry? My land. My land. Nice. That's a lot of horses. It's a great shot. Oh, <laughs> Speaks the language. That's good. Yeah, no oil, no fear. So I'm settled with no fear. No oil, no fear. You fed the soldiers that won the war. Well, saw more die from the flu, but yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't have it. Your money flows freely here now. Well, I do. I do love that money, sir. <laughs> well, don't we all? Keep that thing wrapped up over there? I did. I did. Well, <laughs> as best you could. As best I could. That is good advice. 
That's, that's real good. Don't get played out in the open with alcohol, you hear? Because then you'll cause trouble. Are we, is this during Prohibition? Oh, no, sir, I won't. Don't make small trouble about nothing. You're going to make trouble, make it big. Make big get trouble. A big payoff. <laughs> okay, I okay. I the reserve deputy sheriff in Fairfax. Oh, he's the sheriff? Come on, I could read. Yeah. Well, you smarten yourself up. Get that book on old sage. Yes, yeah. He worked in this already. Like I, as I read in the synopsis that like the whole point of this is that they marry the women and then take their land, right? It's because they're not talking. It don't mean they don't know everything about everything. <laughs> Wise words, yes. It's about everybody. <laughs> uh, okay. Anna Sanford, age forty-one. No investigation. So who says if there's an investigation or not? <gasps> what the hell? Age 21. Suicide. <laughs> who shoots themselves in the heart to kill themselves? That's not really how it works. You know, she's restricted too, so we have to account for every penny. Restricted how? A proper photo for you and your family. For you, sir, $40. For you, sir. $40 for a photo back then? Good God. It should have been like a dollar. $40? That's crazy. That's crazy now. <laughs> Not a very safe town, goodness. Full, full blood full, estate. Full blood estate? Now that's something a man could work with. You got a good face, you know that? <laughs> it's all so weird. <laughs> like, what? That's a full blood estate. And she gets that money of the money. Full blood estate is what they're saying. Okay. I wasn't sure. Not against the law. That's smart investment. Didn't they do that in Hawaii as well? I think they did that in Hawaii too. They told me he was, he was going with Matt Williams for a time. You talk too much. <laughs> I like her already. Hong <laughs> Fashi. I don't know what she said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Somehow I don't think so. Don't look back, sweetheart. Cute shoes, though. Wakonta looked down upon the earth, smiled and sprinkled it with sugar candy. Hmm. That is pretty. Here, put this on. Did she buy him that? Oh dear, we're in it now. That's a, that's a big hat. That's a little bit, dinner? it's a little bit big for him. <laughs> it's not quite his style, but. That's a nice house. Why? Oh, uh, for my uncle. I work with him. So did the uncle actually ask him to come so that they could do this? There you go. Love the cigarette holder. That's so cool. You know, you got you got nice color skin. What what color would you say that is? <laughs> really? That's that's your line? Bet you got a soft belly on the inside there. Oh, you just called me a coyote, didn't you? <laughs> A sly Everybody one. wants money. So she knows, all right. Because that's what I was kind of wondering, like, if this is really happening, like, why would they, they fall for it? They seem like they're smart people. Like, I have good whiskey. Not bad whiskey. I think we should try something to find out. <laughs> yeah. She likes to party a little bit. It's all right. She likes, this, she likes to party. But yeah, like, why would the, you know, if this, how could they not kind of figure out that this is what men were doing. Not yet. What are we doing? It's good for the crops, that's for sure. Just be still. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be able to. <laughs> Let's med meditate a little bit. They went from sitting to kneeling? Wait, that's weird. I thought <laughs> they always want more, sweetheart. 
It's the ones with money that are worst about that. You're going to marry me, Molly. <laughs> so he, is he commands it rather than asks her? Those hats are very interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. We had great respect for each other. It's interesting that was a handheld camera, which I've never seen anything like that before. And like that was that old. This is interesting. You think that had to be the lens would have to be open for a really long time, so it'd be hard to get it clear, a clear picture. <laughs> Just having a little bit too much fun there, honey. She does not look good. Minnie's gone now. And after her, that leaves Raven. Mm. Hannah. Are they k killing off the sisters one by one and then making sure that the last one passes her? Oh, fuck. Why are there so many people in their house? <laughs> what is going on? Uh-oh. That can't be a good sign. Yeah, I said I knew that wasn't a good sign. Because of you. Oh, you in general, you young girls. Okay, because yeah. Well she's not wrong. Half ass savages is what I'm concerned. <laughs> they got more money than you. You think I open my legs for any man? Well I get that feeling. <laughs> oh dear. No different, Ernest. Do you hear me? You are no different. No, I, told, I could have told you that, honey. It's time for me to take her home now. What does that mean? Molly. It's your sister Anna. What? Oh, what a cute little bakery. I want to eat at a little bakery like that. Jesus, what happened? Anna Brown and Charles Whitehorn were both murdered. These Astahe are murdering us. <laughs> yeah. Two thousand to five thousand dollars for the arrest and conviction of the murderer. Yeah, good luck with that. I don't know that that's gonna happen. You won't pick us body clean. Yeah. Leave nothing. So they're starting to put two and two together, it sounds like. <laughs> Jesus, they're doing with everybody watching? Yeah, that would not be pleasant to have to hear. We can't go to the state of Oklahoma to help us. No. That means if anyone knows anything about it, you must come to me. <laughs> yes, come to me so I can cover it up. It's easy for you to get me more money and pay my bill. I work for my money. Oh, that's, that's uh, what's his name from Northern Exposure. I, I don't recognize him, but I recognize his voice. Your sister Anna believes in a state of approximately $100,000. Damn. Why couldn't we do something like that with this money? Maybe have a party for the town and maybe invite another man. <laughs> it does not do to talk to this man. No. Be real careful. Meaning what? Oh shit. Okay. Knock off Bill Smith and, and read it too. All that estate money would go to my mother in law, Lizzie Q. And she wills it to my children. So he is kind of aware of what, like, I, I mean, this whole time I'm kind of like, well, is he, tr is he a bad guy? Or is he not a bad guy? Like, does he really know what's going on? He's, he knows what's going on. Now I'd get the insurance money, you get the Buick. That's just a little side deal between me and you. Hell doesn't need to know about that one. Well, is it? Bright red roadster, I think people are gonna know who it belongs to. <laughs> well, I just love money. It's true, I damn near love it as much as I love my wife. <laughs> well, there does he not realize, like, eventually, like, they're kind of come knocking for his wife? They're calling it insulin, it's from Toronto, it costs dearly. Insulin, elbows on the table. Does he get a spanking? Is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> like he's a naughty five-year-old? You got to take back control of your home. 
Well, I don't know that he ha- ever had it to begin with to take back, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. How was he going to... Only open a week and that's better. Yeah, no, I've heard about this, yeah. Didn't they talk about that too in, in The Watchmen? I think they talked about that a little bit. Oh, you tell him. Because he had a harebrained idea to get him nabbed on insurance money on his car. That's bad luck. <laughs> that is bad luck. But it was a pretty obviously car. Like, it's not... It wasn't a rocket science kind of idea. King Hale has, has gifted this to you. He has gifted to this to you. Five people in the whole world are getting this, and you're one of them, Molly. Yeah, if King is getting the insulin, I mean, King can mess with the in- insulin. You ain't, Molly. That's real medicine. She didn't know that. I'd be suspicious, too. So what are you going to do? You going to kill this Indian? How'd you know? Oh, <laughs> Uh, not funny. I don't know, Bill. I mean, I look very good. It's hard to justify this one. So, like, all the doctors and everything, like, they're all just, like, it's so blatant. Like, <laughs> So if he succeeds in demising himself before the end of the year, I forfeit. Oh. <laughs> so he needs to stay alive at least a few more months. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Molly's first husband is that man right there on the floor. What? So why did he tell him that? Like, what's what's the go- game of telling him that? I'm confused. So I'm not sure what the end game is here with Molly. Like, if they're going to, like, are they going to end up killing her, too, and then, then kill Leo's character, and so everything then will go to King? They need to let the police do their job. I'm very disapproving of the Ku Klux Klan, Molly. They're very hungry for a power. Yeah, let's not get the clan involved here. I don't think that's a good idea. I think we should be a little more considerate about how we spend Molly's money. I mean, it's nice that they acknowledge that it's Molly's money. Getting someone done. Oh, I can't do that. I didn't sign on for that kind of work. <laughs> okay, because somebody is going to say no, I don't think so, they finally. In the front of the head. You understand? Front of the head. Yeah, but who shoots themselves in the front of the head? <laughs> shoot themselves in the temple. Or like under the chin or something. Like most people don't shoot themselves. Like how do you even like aim that? <laughs> so weird. Knights come marching in. That's it, bitch. Hey, Ernest. Oh, great. The clan is here. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> what a... What am I looking at here? I don't know what I'm looking at. (laughs) So it was supposed to be in the front of the head. So how would there be, if he shot himself in the front of the head, how would there be blood on the windshield? Was he murdered or did he kill himself? I don't think you're going to get the right answer from him, honey. Call me crazy, but. I would run. Thank you, Bill. I don't think I will. And you're not my friend. <laughs> Take my chances right here in Fairfax. Okay, then. Well, they're going to have to kill him now, but <laughs> good for him. Maybe for at least, like, saying he knows. I mean, somebody knows something what's going on. <laughs> See, the thing is, Bill, I ain't got no nerves. None at all. Okay. It's just that I don't like talking to you. <laughs> well, I think the feeling's mutual. <laughs> Unless you aim to kill me. Or is that your big brother's job? Interesting statement. <laughs> I don't know A.C. Kirby. I don't know what he looks like even, right? I mean, I would do it, but I can't do it because I don't know what he looks like, John. This is just, a, this is just bad planning. Like, what? I'm trying to be nice to you now. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm trying to be nice to you, John. He looks like Matt Damon in that, with that hat, though. Just for a second, I was like, wait, that's not Matt Damon. That's Leonardo DiCaprio. Where were you, huh? Zach Well, you're supposed to be home. Come on. God, the poor woman can really make it up the stairs. You know, Bill ain't too kind to Rita when I'm not there. And he, she was at their house. <laughs> I was gonna say, what's gonna happen? Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. He got a little over uh, enthusiastic with the 
dynamite? Jesus Christ. That's what you asked for, dude. That's what it looks like. When you ask for that, that's what happens. It's Rita, come on, it's Rita! And they're probably, but they, they might survive it. Yeah, that, what, what, is he gonna have like some kind of revelation now that he's, oh dear. Okay, is that necessary to show? Goodness. I mean, is he going to have some revelation about the horribleness of his actions? Like, what does he think he's been doing this whole time? Like, what? That's exactly what he asked for. Sorry, dude. Like, can't really be upset about it when you you made it happen. Oh. Nettie, the maid. Yikes. Oh, the maid. And pieces of her. They're still finding pieces of her. Oh, my God. Jesus. He's just to slow her down. <laughs> That's all it's going to do. Slow her down. Jeez. I mean, I, I, it's just, <laughs> it's kind of unrelenting. And maybe that, maybe that the point of this, of like the why the, the length of this movie is happening this way, it, it is kind of just like over and over, had the same thing's kind of happening over and over and over and over and over again. I'm not sure about the structure of the story, like, like, I don't want to say that I'm bored, but I kind of feel like I'm waiting for something to happen, even though, like, we're, there's an hour and a half left. Is it? Yeah. There's an, yeah, there's an hour and a half left of this movie. There's the length of most movies are left of this movie. And we haven't really, like, are things, are things, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. I'm going to wait to see how it, how it comes around in the end. But, but like, I get it. Like, I get, I get what's happening. I understand what's happening. Do you have any idea who might want to harm you? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Literally everybody. <laughs> oh, dear. My mother came to me. She asked me to dance with her. So is she, she just still does not suspect him of anything of this? Like, I mean, I guess she can't, she can't maybe grasp the whole of it. Yeah, I'm like, am, am I supposed to feel sympathy for him? Am I supposed to? It feels, it feels what's, what I'm being shown and the way I'm being shown it feels very neutral. And I'm not, like, how can you be neutral about this? Like, I'm all for letting people, like, make their own judgments about characters and things. But, and it is an interesting exercise of him being shown, like, he's not being filmed like he's a, it's a, this, he's a bad guy. Or like he's a villain or anything, but he is. It's like so. It's like confusing. Like he's a bad guy. Why is he being shown like he's just like a regular dude? <laughs> like, you know. Oh, no. So I'm thinking this guy might be like FBI. He might be like an undercover investigator or something, or an undercover co cover cop, like to get to get try and get information that a white person couldn't get. I think you need to see the uh, justice of the peace. Those records gone missing from his desk. Oh, have they? Isn't that convenient? Why did you cut the body up into small pieces and cleave the flesh from the limbs with a meat ax? Yeah, let's talk about that. Seems more like an epidemic than bad luck to me. Yeah, a little bit. Appreciate the payday. It's wrong, right? So did he just set that up for him to be killed too? Like. So is he just setting people up to, <laughs> to just shoot each other? <laughs> like, what the hell? Come on outside. Oh, he's talking to that guy. <coughs> what is it? I think, yeah, he's, he's some kind of undercover guy trying to get info, I think. Something happens to you. The head right's got to stay in the family. This is the only way to do yeah, it. Yeah, here we go. So Molly dies, it goes to him. He dies, it goes to King. If something happens to me, what? What would, what would happen to me? Nothing's going to happen to you. This is the formality. Yeah, the formality is, is going to be handy when I decide to kill you and take your money. You realize that this indicates to me that you're planning on adopting and killing these children. <laughs> not if it's not legal and I don't get the money. And I'm not going to do it. <laughs> He's just like, okay. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so blatant about it. Like, okay. Byron Ernest Burkhart. 
I think we can help each other out here. <laughs> of course he can. Yeah, sing like a canary. You got a better chance of convicting a guy for kicking a dog than killing an Indian. Well, that's true enough, sadly. I sold him a $30,000 fire policy last month. <laughs> God, she looks miserable. The poor woman. It is interesting, like, it, you can see his jaw getting, like, he was doing some really interesting things with his lips because they were in the beginning and they were very tight. And you can see, like, his jaw getting stiffer and stiffer and stiffer as the, as the movie goes on. So does he want to kill himself or does he want to see what's in it? You're next. You're next. Oh, yeah. Probably, sadly. So you think that she would just like stop take like stop taking med the medicine at, at all? Like it's clearly not helping. Like I I'm not sure. Like I'm not like sure why why they're all like going along with all of this, especially the two of them. But I mean, like I know he for him it's greed, <laughs> of course, but he does kind of love her. Like I believe that he loves her. But how can he love her and do this to her at the same time? Like, it's just weird. It's, it, it's just kind of weird. I don't know what to think still. Like, we're still, we're still got an hour left of this, too. Like, what the hell? Why is this movie so long? You got this. You got this all wrong. What do think you know you don't know? So finally, somebody's there. I need to sit down. Yes, you do, but you're standing. <laughs> man, I talked to this man. I talked to this man alone for probably not a while. No. Well, they are gonna let them talk. <laughs> I'm surprised. Dollar fifty, I give you a twenty. No, you didn't. It was a dollar fifty. I didn't give you a dollar fifty. I give you a twenty. I meant to give you a twenty. <laughs> I meant to give you a twenty. Yeah, that's uh, that's a difference. Ernest, you're a good man, aren't you? <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. And I don't think this is how your life was meant to turn out. He seemed pretty willing to make it turn out this way. So this is on my neck? Yes, sir. That is kind of what happens when you take money to kill someone. Somebody save this poor woman. Are they going to be able to save her? How did what work out for me? Mr. Hale's promise for a grand escape. Shit, I'm sitting here talking to you, ain't I? <laughs> Judge not. Put that in the Pascadena Journal, Fairfax Chief. I feel like he's going to weasel out of this somehow. Your mom is walking. Well, she's up. She is feeling better. I mean, I'm not hopeful for Judge Justice here. Like, call me crazy, but... I demand to confer privately with Mr. Burkhart. This is on. What? And I have not had a chance to communicate with him before he testifies. That is kind of weird. I'm willing to talk to him. Yeah. The rules prohibit this, Your Honor. Yeah. How can how can he be his attorney when he's the other guy's attorney? I didn't realize that we hadn't seen Brendan Fraser yet. I really hope she realizes, like, how bad this guy is. Like, he really is. Like, he wasn't just, like, being manipulated. Like, All right, bro. Let that go say it. Does she mean that symbolically or literally? So she's still going with him? Like, I just, it's just the, uh, I don't know that I'm seeing enough of her inner thought process of, like, She's afraid of him. She's afraid to eat in her own home. Yet she goes home with this guy. Like, it's like, what? I'm so confused. Hey, come sit. No, I don't think so. No, thank you. They beat you. They beat you. Yes, they beat me. They beat me. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> Is he really, he's really that manipulatable? Like. Oh my goodness. 
you, you know they beat me right now. They beat me. They, they tortured me. They kept me up for days. So I would make... Well, she has to know, like, okay, the second I got away from my husband, I started getting better. <laughs> please realize this, sweetheart. Please. When will you come back? I don't think so. I don't think so, dude. They can arrest me all they want. Let's make sure you know the rogue. I don't think he knows anything. I mean, I kind of thought that he knew what he was doing, but I guess he doesn't. He's just, he's just letting the wind just blow him. Thanks, Molly. She gave him a pillow after he kills her sister. Wait, who is this now? Did she have a whooping cough? Is that why she died? <laughs> so they're both kind of locked up in jail. Like, is <laughs> where is this going? I still feel like they're, he's going to weasel his way out of this at some point, some way, but. How's everyone? They're, they're not good. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. Well, Testify. Well, that's a strong choice to make against adversity. <laughs> that's a strong choice to make against adversity. Okay. All right, then. You're going to regret. I ain't got nothing but regret, Bill. You have a family. I'm not sure why there's music under this scene. There's a lot of music under this scene that does, doesn't seem necessary. I don't want you near my family. No. Yeah, finally, geez. I mean, it's interesting to me like, that there's not really any discussion of like, what we did was wrong. <laughs> what you made me do was wrong. What you manipulated me into doing was wrong, and I should have not done it. Like, there's none of that. Did your uncle present you with a plan by which you would benefit from the deaths of all these Indian women? So did this really happen in court? Like, was this really taken to court? Like... And, like, the mystery was solved, kind of? Or is this just, like, are we in wishful thinking territory now? So, yeah, we'll have to Google, like, what, re what really happened here. <laughs> like, how much of the true story is a true story? Do they, uh, they know what's happened? Not so much. It's probably for the best. You haven't told all the truths. Yes, I have. Have you? My soul is clean now, Molly. Well, he does, does he need to confess to her that, like, he gave her that medicine? What did you give me? Oh, good. She flat out asks. Okay. What was in it? Show me Gussie. Does he even know? He doesn't even know. Insulin. Look her right in the face and lie to her. Is she gone for good? Or I'll walk out for good. Bye-bye. True Crime Stories has been brought to you through the courtesy of J. Edgar Hoover and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> okay. William Hale, the ringleader of the deadly plots, was found guilty and sent to Leavenworth for life. Well, thank God. Hale was released in 1947. The parole board cited his record release. as a good prisoner for his early release, but not everybody was happy. Yeah. Years later, he was granted a pardon for his crimes and once again moved back to Osage County. A pardon? <laughs> How did he get pardoned? After Molly divorced Ernest. Well, thank God for that. Mrs. Molly Cobb. Oh. 50 years ago. Hi. Interesting. Beside her father, her mother, her sisters, and her daughter. There was no mention of the murders. Interesting. That's an interesting choice. Interesting ending. So, I have questions. Mm, you do too, huh? Okay. I'm just not sure how I'm supposed to feel about this movie. Um, and it's not because I don't understand the story and the irony of it and the history of disenfranchisement of the indigenous people. But I think my main question is like, did it really need to be that long in order to tell the, the story effectively? Like, I don't think so.
Like I pretty much got the gist of the crimes being committed and the like systemic nature of the community and the society that allowed it to occur. I got it all after about a half an hour. I didn't need two hours of it. Like it was two hours of murders and misery. And like, I, I, I was really ready to move on to the next chapter re- much sooner than that. So I, yeah. Because the story of what happened is pretty compelling. I, I, I just don't know that the way the story is told in this movie is compelling. And that's because Molly is not the center of this movie. Ernest is. And I don't know why. Um, he's not that interesting of a character. Like he's blown around like a feather on the wind. Like he's just easily manipulated by his uncle. And he has like no moral compass at all. Like does he even for a minute pause to think that maybe he shouldn't kill all these people? That maybe he shouldn't poison his wife. Like, what the? Th- why is the? Where's the thought process in there? I don't know. Molly is shown as just strangely unemotional, and I I really struggle to see like her in her life and her thought processes and such. I mean, she's so Lily Gladstone is so compelling on screen. She's so present and so beautiful and strong, but it was hard to connect with her because the focus was so much on Ernest's view of Molly. And the conflict within him rather than Molly's own view of the world and what was happening around her. Like, where is the scene where she's told or realizes that her husband is, was basically poisoning her this whole time, that all her, that suffering, that physical suffering she went through was because of him. Like, where is her journey from loving him to leaving him? Like, and I'm not even sure I get why she married him in the first place. Like, we got a few scenes and and with that about that, but we got way more plotting and murder scenes and so much more detail about that than about Molly's and Ernest's relationship. Uh, Scorsese said that he wanted to focus on that and have their marriage be the driving force of the film, but I'm not sure he followed through on that desire at all. I, I think someone should go through and see which scenes have more lines or even like more minutes on screen, the scenes with Molly and Ernest or the scenes with Ernest and Hale. Uh, because this movie is much more about those two men than it is about this marriage. Overall, though, I mean, am I glad that this story was told? Yeah, I mean, 100%. Like, we need to see this story and know what was done to the Osage people, especially this kind of mid-range history between, you know, the white settlers showing up, taking over the plains, and then the Native Americans being shuffled to the reservations, and then what's going on today? Like, there's there's a whole lot of stuff that happened in the middle in the 20th century that we, we don't ever really think about. Um, but the unnecessary length of this film is going to turn a lot of people away from wanting to watch it. And the, just the, the focus on the white experience, I don't know. I mean, maybe Scorsese did it on purpose. And, like, and that radio drama at the end is just another example of, like, indigenous stories being co-opted by white men for their own profit, including Scorsese, which is what maybe that's why he showed himself as a part of that radio drama with this huge like corporate sponsor sign overhead, you know, like would this movie have gotten made in any form if a director of Scorsese's clout wasn't involved in it? And he's showing us maybe that he's aware of that fact. Am I giving him too much credit or did I just figure out like a famous director's little wink of a, to us at the end there that he understands the irony of this situation? <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think so, but I, yeah. There were some really beautiful visual moments. I, I can think of a few. The one where Molly's face was shown kind of like upside down laying back on the bed. Um, the guys dancing in the fires outside their windows. That was a very cool kind of just juxtaposition to the shots in the beginning of the, of the guys da- dancing in the oil dropping on them. <laughs> that was a very cool uh, juxtaposition of this like creation and destruction moment. And then the powwow at the end was really cool. But the, the entire film was obviously very well shot, but there's really, really beautiful moments that made me go, oh, wow, we're, they were just too far, too few and far between. Uh, I think this movie deserves the accolades it's getting, especially for the acting, especially for Lily Gladstone. But um, it, I mean, it's clearly well made. I don't know that I have any like affection for it or any emotion about it all at all, really, other than maybe like a slight level of disappointment, but not really surprised. Like, and I can't help but compare it to poor things that I saw last night that it felt like such a unique experience and so visually just cool and weird and and such a journey of discovery and growth 
that we go on with Bella in order for her to see her have her kind of her own form of justice and self-determination in the end. I just wish this movie had like a tenth of that drive and energy. Like I wish it had more joy and hope and focus on the woman, the woman who, who should be the center of the story because she is more fascinating than what happened to her. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to see all my reactions, do all the things that really does help the channel. Tell me what you thought about this movie in the comments, because I'd love to hear what you guys think and let me know what you think I should be reacting to next. Then check out my Patreon and see, to see full length reactions, participate in polls and watch lots of exclusive content. I love sharing movies with you guys, good and bad. Thank you so much for watching with me.